So on our channel, we have published a couple of very useful videos. The first video was how to do how to do an ML project for your undergraduate or graduate project, right? How to do a machine learning project was one of the very popular videos that we put on our channel. The second video was if you're planning to do a machine learning project, we also have machine learning projects. We have started machine learning projects at AppliedAACourse.com. So we gave a brief overview about what we do at Applied AA Course for machine learning projects and also some information about pricing. These two videos were very, very popular and we would provide the links to these videos. For those of you who have not seen these videos, we'll provide the links for you uh, in the description of this video, in the description, in the description section of this video. Those of you who have seen it, this is a this is like a continuation video to, to these two video snippets. In this video, we will see how we solve a project. The, 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 because you know, most of our videos we mentioned that we solve a real world problem. We keep saying that we solve a real world machine learning project end to end. So I want to go over what are the contents of each project in, in detail so that you understand what we are coming from and how we really solve a problem. Because most people do not may not understand what end to end basically means. So let's let, let me walk you through each of the steps that we have. The first step here is given a real world or a business problem, we, we would like to understand what the problem is. For example, let's take the example, right? Let's assume I'm a scientist or engineer at Amazon and I want to build an Amazon product recommendation system, an Amazon product recommendation system, right? A product recommendation recommendation system. So first of all, you have to understand that Amazon has a website. When you're looking at a page, there are similar products which are recommended for you. So understanding the problem itself, right? So what is the problem? How is the data collected? The basics of the problem itself. First, understanding the real world business problem that needs to be solved is very important. So that is the first section in our content. We, try, we explain what the problem we are trying to solve. And the second thing is, what are the objectives of, what are the business objectives? What are the business objectives and constraints? For example, for this problem, the business objective, the business objective could be that you want to increase your sales. You want to increase your sales of items. This is a, this is a very clear business objective. They don't care what you are showing. They don't care about relevance as much. If you go to a business team and say, I'm building a product recommendation engine, they say, okay, by doing all of this machine learning and advanced, advanced artificial intelligence, are our sales increasing or not? Are you creating an increase in sales or not? That's a business objective. But what is a business constraint here? There are also business constraints like you need to be able to suppose if somebody goes to a product page, if somebody goes to a product page, you should be able to give the similar products very, very fast. Because if the page loads slowly, customers will be dissatisfied, right? So you need to you need to be able to decide which are the related products very, very fast. This is also called as a low latency system because the time between asking the similar products and the time by the time you return the similar products it should be the difference between those two timestamps should be very low so the business constraint is basically that you need to be able to sh give your results of similar products very very fast or low latency is a business constraint right so given every given any real world business problem we discuss what are the objectives what are the business objectives and what are the constraints that we need to satisfy? Because the business objectives and constraints will help us understand the problem better and model it better using machine learning. The third thing that we do is we try to understand what is the data available for us? What is the exact data? What is the exact data that we have at our disposal? Right? Understanding what data is available also is very instrumental in deciding how to solve this problem. The fourth section in our, in, our, in our contents for case studies and projects is mapping the real world problem into a machine learning problem, right? So now at the end of this, you understand what your real world or business problem is, right? You understand the problem and you also have some data, some clue about what data you have. Now, given this, you need to understand what type of machine learning problem is this? Is it a classification problem? Is it a regression problem? Is it a recommender system problem? Right? Is it a recommender system problem or is it a clustering problem? Right? Or is it is it, is it like a deep learning problem? And right? of course, deep learning can solve both classification, regression, also recommender systems. But does this does this problem actually need deep learning? So understanding what type of problem will be useful or what type of problem uh, does the does the real world problem map to in the machine learning domain is important. 
Next comes, given the real world objectives and constraints, what are the key performance indicators? How do you measure your model? For example, in the Amazon recommendations, in the Amazon recommendation system problem, right? In the Amazon product recommendation system problem, in the Amazon product recommendation system problem, your KPI could be how many times have people clicked and purchased, right? So you need to come up with a business, a, a KPI or a performance metric that correlates well, that correlates well with the business objective. You need to find a machine learning objective or a machine learning performance metric that correlates very, very closely, as closely as possible with the business objective, right? And you also come up with what are the machine learning constraints. And given this problem, can this problem, can this big problem be broken up into smaller problems? And can these smaller problems be solved first before we solve the big problem, right? Similarly, given, the, given, given our big data set, given our big data set, how do we break it up into training data set and test data set? How do we break it up into training and test data set so that we can build our machine learning models on top of this? So this gives us, so this whole of fourth section goes from a real world problem to a machine learning problem. This is extremely important. And oftentimes this is a non-trivial. Some people may think this is trivial, but this is extremely important and extremely critical part because people may understand real world problems. People may understand machine learning problems, but if you can't connect a real world problem, or if you can't convert a real world problem into a machine learning problem, all of your knowledge is useless. Right? So we spend a considerable amount of time on this. Once we do that, then we do a lot of exploratory data analysis. We do things like feature engineering, a lot of feature transformations, a very domain specific exploratory data analysis. Suppose if I'm solving Amazon recommender systems, I do, I do a bunch of literature survey, read up research papers and see what types of things actually work well for, for problems like this in this domain. Right? Then understanding data, also documenting failed cases. It's not, it's not, it's not uh, enough to just document and write about things that work. It's also important to document feature engineering and feature transformation steps that did not work. Right? So that's what we do in EDA. After EDA, we say, okay, let's, let's build a very simple baseline model, a very simple model. What is the simplest model? What is the simplest model? Simplest and fairly quick to build model fairly quick to build model that I can build to solve my problem at hand. Then when I when I choose a baseline model, I, I clearly, we clearly articulate why are we picking this model and we'll implement it and get results for it. And when, for, for of course, your baseline model will not be like state of the art. It's a very, very simple model. For all the cases where the model has failed, we do exploratory data analysis on the failure cases to understand what has, why, why this algorithm has failed, right? Or why this model has not worked out. And we use things like data visualization techniques like TSNE and principal component analysis and other visualization techniques to understand why, why in some of those failure cases, this model did not work. Because this gives us a much clearer idea on what other types of models we can employ, right? Then once we have a baseline model, then we'll go through more complex models in increasing order of complexity. We'll try model one. For each model, again, we go through the same steps. We discuss why we pick a model. We discuss the how to implement this model and get the results. We discuss the results themselves. We discuss EDA or we do data analysis on all failure cases. And we understand why a model is failing in some instances. So we go in increasing order of complexity from, from baseline model. We try multiple models. We never solve the problem using only one model. We typically try and do at least two to three models. At the end of it, at the end of trying all these models, we know which model performs best for our problem. Then there is a section at the end which discusses given this solution. For example, let's assume you decided the logistic regression. You decided that logistic regression is a, is a good algorithm to solve the given problem at hand. Then we discuss about how to productionize this model for in the real world constraints. Like how often do you retrain a model in production? What are the data structures that you'll use at runtime? Right? How do you how do you actually productionize a model in the real world is extremely important. Similarly, how do you measure the impact of this model in the real world? through schemes like A-B testing. So this is this is how, so we solve a problem end to end. When we say end to end, we solve it from understanding the real world business problem up to productionizing a model and measuring the actual real world impact of our models. So we go through all these stages when, when we say, when we say end to end modeling, when we say that we, we solve a problem end to end, that's what we mean. And these are the, these are the contents that you can find for each of your case study. Each of our case study or project has all of these contents and we explain each of these, each of these in full detail for each of our projects. Thereby, when a student, when a student solves this problem like this, they understand how, how a problem, how a real world problem, 
how a real world problem is solved is solved at a major company at a major company or institution right because these are typically a bunch of steps that we typically employ by the way we employ all these steps when we actually solve a real world problem in, in the industry and we want to give you a good enough, good glimpse on how it is done end to end and these are the contents that you have seen on how we treat or how we solve each of our case studies and projects